Before we begin, I don't know if any of you are Dragon Ball super fans, but if, if you are not, then 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 listen to this and, and take this in, because I mean this when I say it. In Dragon Ball Super, when they're fighting with all the universes that are on the line, if, if you lose the tournament, the universe that you live in gets destroyed. And at the end of the series, at the end of the iteration of Dragon Ball Z, we see is Goku, is Android 17, and is Frieza versus Jiren. Now, if you don't know who Jiren is, Jiren is literally the most unstoppable force in the universes combined. Goku was giving him buckets every time he went Ultra Instinct. But whenever he wasn't Ultra Instinct, it was literally a problem and he was unstoppable. That's what we just saw. The only reason that Goku was able to defeat Jiren was because Frieza and Android 17 came and saved his behind when he wasn't Ultra Instinct. And that's exactly what happened tonight. That's why you watch NBA basketball. That's why the Denver Nuggets and Portland Trailblazers should be on TNT and ESPN every single game. That's why you pay your ticket to watch the game. That's why you log on and you get NBA League Pass. That's why you watch every game of the regular season. That's why you're a diehard because you want to watch two juggernauts, two MVP caliber players, two sharpshooters, elite clutch players go at it. You saw one of the all-time great back-and-forth performances from this year's MVP, Nikola Jokic, and the one and only sixth pick in the 2012 NBA Draft, the man himself, the best rapper in the NBA, the second or first best point guard in the NBA, the most clutch point guard in the NBA, Damian Lillard. Give that man his flowers. Give that man his flowers. He was spectacular tonight. Damian Lillard was spectacular tonight. Absolutely absurd. He was absurd in the fourth quarter. He was absurd in the first overtime. He was absurd in the second overtime. Damian Lillard was hotter than the sun. And the only reason the Denver Nuggets did not lose that game is because Nikola Jokic went ultra instinct in overtime. Wasn't even just scoring. The pass that he made to Michael Porter Jr., remember, you do not double Nikola Jokic. You don't do it. This is the thing. Nurkic fouled himself out in the fourth quarter, changed the rest of the game. But so they didn't double team him. They finally decided to double team him in the second overtime. And what did he do? Cost him. Austin Rivers cost him. Michael Porter Jr. in the corner. Because that is the best passer, 16 or over in NBA history. And it's not close. Don't double Jokic. And you. this is the thing. Here's the thing you don't do. This is what Michael Malone did. You tested. You tested Damian Lillard. Let me test him and see if he's going to hit not one, not two, not three, but four clutch three-pointers to tie the game up or to give you a go-ahead lead. Dame was so hot he had a backboard 35-foot three-point shot. Michael Malone, I've supported Michael Malone. You know I had him third on my Coach of the Year ballot. Michael Malone made one of the worst mistakes I've ever seen him make by not fouling Damian Lillard at the end of the fourth quarter, not fouling Damian Lillard at the end of the first overtime, just testing him. Step back, step back, turn around, step back, Shaq Harrison. Doesn't make any sense. The only reason the Denver Nuggets didn't lose that game is because Nikola Jokic was the MVP, and he controlled every single possession for the Denver Nuggets. And every time he didn't have the ball, it was a turnover. Austin Rivers, turnover. You have to trust your best players. You have to trust your legendary players. You have to give them an opportunity to win you the game, an opportunity to excel, an opportunity to do what they're supposed to do. Nikola Jokic and Damian Lillard has been a dogfight. It was a dogfight two years ago. It was a dogfight tonight. It was a dogfight between two of the top seven best players in the NBA. Give both of them their flowers. Flowers. Now, we got to talk about it. That foul call on Damian Lillard on Austin Rivers was one of the worst calls I've ever seen in the NBA playoffs environment in my life. 
in my life. Austin Rivers has a hand on Damian Lillard. His hand grazes Damian. And so they call a shooting foul. They review it. So instead of just taking the foul away altogether, they take away the shooting foul, but they assess a common foul on the ground. And everybody's looking like, what are you talking about? How is this a foul? How is that a foul? It doesn't, it didn't make any sense. They didn't, they didn't understand. Even, even <coughs> when they were calling the game on NBA TV, to them, they made it a foul. But you search Twitter, it don't matter who it was. People that don't even like the Denver Nuggets, don't even like, yo, like, where is this? What is this? Ryan Blackburn, Adam Morris, Harrison Wynn, go up and down the list. HP Basketball, go up and down the list. Nobody thought it was a foul. It clearly wasn't a foul. Changed the game. That foul, that foul gave Dame another shot, sent the game into overtime, and he had that shot. He hit against Michael Porter Jr. when it was a scramble. Michael ended up on Damian Lillard, one of the clutchest players ever in NBA history, and that was lights out from there. That was lights out from there. So that's the end of the first iteration. That's the end of the fourth quarter. Game is tied up. And then you get... Then you get to the first overtime, and the Denver Nuggets hit three straight threes. Austin Rivers, I want to say, maybe Michael Porter Jr. Jermai, I can't remember who exactly hit him. Oh, oh, and then oh gosh, and then Yoke, Yoke hit a step back three pointer, not even like just just literally fading away, swack, and they were up nine, and it looked like man, all right, close the game out. Close the game out. Of course, they don't close the game out. Of course, they let it get tight. Of course, finally, Michael Malone put Shaq Harrison in, and all of a sudden, Shaq Harrison is supposed to get out here and stop this dude who just went super freaking Nova and Damian Lillard? No. What did Dame do? Turned around. Shaq. Because he's like that. Look, man, Damian Lillard, I, I've told you, I've told you, I've told you, I've said it on the channel, I've told you. He has always been like that. When I saw this man play in college, he was like that. And he proved every bit of his worth tonight. That's why Portland loves him. Don't I take nothing away from him. But this is what I want people to understand. Why is the Series 3-2 right now? So it's not just that Jamal Murray is not playing. But you got to understand this. Damian Lillard has never played as good as he's playing against the Nuggets as he is in this series. The reason why he's playing so well... It's because he doesn't have to worry about getting defended by either P.J. Dozier or Will Barton or Gary Harris any longer. But on top of that, he doesn't have to guard anybody. He doesn't have to guard Faku. He doesn't have to guard Austin Rivers. He doesn't have to guard Shaq Harrison. And he don't really got to guard Marcus Howard. He doesn't have to guard these people. They don't really give him, make him work on offense or on defense. Whereas Jamal Murray, if he was in the game, he's giving you 35 to 28 points per game. He's going to go after Dame the entire game. Or Will Barton's going to do it. And you know Will Barton's going to get you 10 points in the first quarter. He's going to shoot 18 shots. That's why That's why having Will Barton change the outlook of the series. Because if you have a scoring threat that he or C.J. McCollum has to deal with, it changes the dynamic of the game. Because Dame can't just sit here and shoot whatever he wants. He can't sit here and just be fully rested going into overtime. It don't work like that. So, tonight, man, Nikola Jokic, 46 minutes. 38 points, 11 rebounds, 9 assists, 14 of 31 from the field, 3 of 9 from the three-point line, 7 of 8 from the free throw line, 4 blocks, 1 steal. He was a minus 2 tonight. Michael Porter Jr., 48 minutes, 26 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists. What a comeback game. 10 of 13 from the field, 3 of 5 from the three-point line, 3 of 3 from the free throw line with 2 steals, and he was a plus 11. He was a plus 11. He was tied with Norman Powell for the game high with a plus 11. Damian Lillard tonight, 52 minutes, 55 points, 6 rebounds, 10 assists, 17 of 24 from the field. Who does that sound like? Jamal Murray. 12 of 17 from the three-point line, 9 of 10 from the free throw line, and one steal, three blocks, and he was a plus 2 tonight. Now, this is, again, Jamal Murray had a 50-point game where he was 21 of 25 from the field 8 of 10 from the three-point line with no free throws. That's the caliber of game that Damian Lillard had tonight, except with the free throws. It was just an outrageous game. This is one of the best games. 
Across the board, look at these numbers. Look and listen to these numbers. The Denver Nuggets shot 48% from the field. The Portland Trailblazers shot 46% from the field. The Portland Trailblazers shot 44% from three. The Denver Nuggets shot 45% from three. The Portland Trailblazers were 25 of 29 and 86% from the free throw line. The Denver Nuggets were 27 of 32 for 84% from the three point line. Free throw line. 14 turnovers for the Portland Trailblazers. 11 for the Denver Nuggets. 25 assists for the Portland Trailblazers. 33 for the Denver Nuggets. 45 and 10 in rebounds and offensive rebounds for the Portland Trailblazers and 55 and 13 or 52 and 13. For the Denver Nuggets, six to five blocks, six to five steals. I mean, it was just, it was just, a, it was almost an even matchup across the board. This is one of the best games you will ever see in the playoffs because the players who were supposed to make it special made it special. The players who were supposed to make the special made it special. Nikola Jokic, the MVP, and Damian Lillard. One of the best players in the NBA, clutchest players in the NBA. They did what they were supposed to do. They carried their teams to right towards the edge. And it just so happened that Goku had Frieza and Android 17. That's the only reason they were able to take out the best player, the most unstoppable clutch player in the clutch universe, Damian Lillard. It was just an exceptional game, you all. I really think. I would go back if I was you. I would go back and watch this game. I would go back and watch the highlights. I would save this game if you DVR'd it. Make sure you save it because this is something you want to go back to. Even if you don't want to watch the first, second, and third quarter, go watch from the fourth quarter on because that is elite playoff caliber basketball. And that's two players, really three. Michael Porter Jr. played well in the fourth quarter in overtime and overtime number two. That's three players who showed up in the clutch. And you also got to see the difference. Because C.J. McCollum choked. Robert Covington choked. Austin Rivers came up short at times. Monte Morris balled. Monte Morris tonight. Off the bench, 41 minutes, 28 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists, 7 of 18 from the field, 4 of 9 from the 3-point line, 10 of 11 from the free throw line, a plus 7. Everybody on the Denver Nuggets bench was in the pluses today, except for Shaq Harrison. But here's the thing. It wouldn't even have gone that route because in the fourth quarter, Paul Millsap misses a, here's the rim, here's Paul Millsap, misses a bunny layup that would have put the Nuggets up two, and they wouldn't even have got to the first overtime. But he missed. Jokic was sitting on the bench. He had only played, he he was on pace to play 36 minutes until the overtimes happened. And he ended up with 46 minutes. So that goes to show you he's still playing around his season average. But uh, there's not, and, and even Aaron Gordon played well, y'all. 39 minutes from him, 14 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 6 of 11 from the field, 2 of 4 from the 3-point line, 0 of 2 from the free throw line, also would have changed the game with one block. C.J. McCollum, 18-7-7, but he was 7-22. So like I said, man, it was just one of those days. It was just one of those days where your superstars did what they were supposed to do. They showed up. They balled out. Simple as that. They showed up and they balled out. Simple as that. They did what they were supposed to do. That's the thing. If Nurkic isn't in the game, it's a wrap. Because then you got to put Ennis Cantor on Yoke or you got to put Rocco and Robert Covington or Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo's strong, but he ain't that strong. It, it was just, it was an outrageous game. I can't wait to read your comments. I need to tell me what you thought of the game. Let me know. That was was a historic all-time performance in the playoff situation. Just a game. 147 to 140 Denver Nuggets. They are now up 3-2 to two against the Portland Trailblazers. And the Denver Nuggets, if I was them, I'm going to Portland to try to win this series. I'm going to Portland to try to win this series. I don't want to give them another opportunity. I don't want to give an opportunity for my role players to mess up in Game 7. If you got Jamal Murray different if you got Ye- no, Nikola Jokic that's different you got MPJ that's different this ain't that kind of game though because you don't want Facundo Campazzo, Austin Rivers, Shaq Harrison and Marcus Howard to be the deciding factors in a game seven you just don't Monte Morris he has man he has four how many game sevens does Monte Morris have under the belt the Spurs Portland so four Utah and the Clippers he has four Yoke has four all these players that were on the Nuggets the last two years, they all got incredible playoff experience. But I'm trying to take the living daylights out of Portland. I'm trying to. That next game, 
Wait, hold on. Harrison Wynn put a quote on Michael Malone said he didn't choose to foul Damian Lillard up three out of respect for Lillard. He also said he was worried about Lillard potentially converting a four-point play. Which ain't a lie. Which ain't a lie. Which ain't a lie. I mean, but again, I would have fouled him. They he, they should have fouled him. They should have fouled him. But, I mean, that's the thing about Dame, man. Like, Dame will make four-point plays on you. He already made one this series. He made one today. He made one in the fast break today. So, again, man, Yoke, Yoke was just excellent. Dame was excellent. This was just... This was a battle of the super heavyweights, and this is the difference. This is the difference between your superstars, your stars, and your upcoming stars. Superstars. Yeah, that's, that's Nikola Jokic. That's Damian Lillard. That's Kawhi Leonard. LeBron James. Steph Curry. Kevin Durant. I mean, I, James Harden. I mean, Giannis. But again, even Giannis hasn't done this. He hasn't done this. So, there's like six, seven superstars. And then you have your stars, Jason Tatum's. Really, even your Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray is in, in the playoffs. He can get to that. He's a superstar-ish in the playoffs. He's really a star player. But when he gets into the clutch, he's a superstar. But it's rare you have a star to superstar. Michael Porter Jr. is a star, emerging star. But he is not a superstar. He is a little bit away from being a superstar. Because a superstar can determine everything. They, they like, Yoke strikes fear into everything Portland does because they know that they have to play perfect defense. That's the thing about Yoke. You have to play perfect defense to stop him. Not just scoring, but distributing the ball. Damian Lillard, when he's hot, once he touches half court, double. If you if they're screening at half court, double. And then no matter how tight you're playing, step back to the right, step back to the left, turn around, step back, cross over, step back. It don't matter. He's going to get the shot off. It's just a matter if he's on or not, y'all. So, look, that was an incredible game. The Denver Nuggets are coming back on Thursday. And will it be on Oxygen Network again? By the way, NBA. By the way, NBA, how do you feel about putting the Lakers and Phoenix on TNT knowing that the, every game they play is a classic between Portland and Denver? Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, y'all, we're going to be back on Thursday. Let me know in the comment section what you think. One of the best games I've ever seen. Yoke, Dame. Goku, Jiren, and we out.